Hi there, it's Bill Knapp from speakerbillknapp.com. I'm coming to, coming to you today from Lake Manyara in Tanzania, East Africa. I'd like to talk to you today about the five different levels of thinkers. It just as an introduction. There are the poverty class, the people that are worrying about where their next meal is coming from. The working class, individuals that go to work, come back from work, go to work, come back from work, and that's basically their life and they really have no greater intentions, don't see that there's other possibilities. The vast majority of people fall into the middle class. They know that there's something better out there. They know that they can attain more wealth, that they can do more. But because they're fear-based and because they're very self-centered, they obviously don't do so. Then you have the wealthy class or the upper class. These are the people that know how to make money, and they do, and they make lots of it, but they don't see the overall picture. Finally, you have the world thinkers, the world-class thinkers. They're the people that know how to make the money. They're the people that know how to live life to the fullest, but they also realize that the true value in life comes not just from what you can get for yourself, but what you can do for others. The reason I bring this up today is because we're on this photographic tour of East Africa. And our leader, our guide, is a gentleman by the name of Peter. Peter is definitely a world-class thinker. He is from Africa. He handles these safari guides. But at the same time, he is aware that conservation is extremely important. He is aware of the poverty of the people. He's aware that the government needs assistance. He's aware that tourism is looked at as both a good thing and a bad thing. And what he's doing is he's putting a lot of his time and his effort into assisting the impoverished, the children that need it, working with conservationists so that they can save this beautiful country. At the same time, he's also doing for himself clearly a world-class thinker. At the same time, we have another individual in the group. Name goes unmentioned. But when we first came over here, they told us that as just little gifts for the children, we could bring pencils, pens, paper, and if you wanted to, bring soccer balls. So several of us brought soccer balls. Some of us brought paper. Some of us brought pens and pencils. One person brought a box of pens. Doesn't matter as long as you do something for someone else. However, when we went to the school this morning, and it was a phenomenal experience going to the school, because we got to see the, the joy in these kids' faces when they were receiving these day-to-day these -day mundane things that we have at our fingertips. Then, let me regress there for a second. They have their soccer ball. Their soccer ball was a bunch of plastic bags that they tied up into another plastic bag. That was their soccer ball. When they saw that they were getting real soccer balls, their eyes were this big, their smiles were even bigger. And so they asked for a representative from the group. You know, it's interesting, the people that gave the most just stood back because they didn't have to take the credit. They didn't need the credit. They could just get their pleasure from the, the smiles on the faces of these kids. The one person who brought the box of pens stepped forward and said, here I am. Middle class, all the way. We should really strive to be world-class thinkers like Peter. We should think about others. We should think about what we could do for other people. Learn lessons from Peter and other people like him. So, until the next time, please live in gratitude. Live in abundance and work on being a world-class thinker. This is Bill Knapp from BillKnappBlog.com.